All right, so let's, let's look at vibrato. First of all, let's look at the mechanism that enables us to do the vibrato, and then we're going to look at how that mechanism relates to the playing, because we can't do one without the other, and they're slightly separate subjects. So if I want to vibrate on a note, essentially what we're looking at is an oscillation on that note. So as with all these things, we have to understand where this is coming from, which part of the body is going to start the vibrato. And as always, it's the forearm. So if I'm going to oscillate this and I want a result here, I have to make sure that finger, hand, and forearm unit is really trained into the arm. If I start with the wrist here, or the wrist here, or the fingers curled, I'm adding tension to that oscillation. So the moment the arm is trained with that basic finger, hand, and forearm, and I start the vibrato down here, I have a number of different sizes that I can create. They all come from the same place. They don't look like they all come from the same place. And that's where we get into a mess. The smaller I make it, the more it looks like there's activity in the fingers, right? And the middle one is looking a little bit more active in the wrist, and the large one, you're gonna see more arm motion but the engine is always the same. So if I try to do it from my fingers, I can't actually move. If I think in different sizes down here, I can make it incredibly small or really, really big. But the importance is the relation, the important thing is the relationship finger, hand, and forearm. The other thing to remember that we tend to forget is if my thumb is touching the neck and I am oscillating the arm, what is my thumb going to feel? Some kind of oscillation. A hybrid version of the vibrato movement. It's the same thing as this knot resonating when you fall up with the arm. And very often, because the thumb feels like it's sort of split away from the fingers by the neck, we forget that that thumb has to respond and resonate with the movement in the arm. So if you think about the vibrato, just think, okay, what am I really feeling on my thumb when that arm is trying to vibrate? Because if the thumb is dead or tight or stuck, then this can't move. Okay, so the thumb is part of the picture. All sizes start in the forearm. And once that finger, hand, and forearm unit is in place, the reaction to this oscillation will come out on the end of the finger. So the vibrato is a response to the activity in the forearm. It's not an engine in my fingers or in my wrist. So now let's look at the second part of this question. With, with all these questions we can get in, there's a lot of detail we can get into, but let's look at fundamental principles and then we can come back to it. So the question is, how do I use vibrato when I'm really playing? And for this, we have to understand the difference between the playing mechanism and the sustaining mechanism, because they are not the same thing. The playing mechanism is the process whereby the finger passes through the string to the wood and makes the pitch. That's the playing mechanism. Now, in Taubman Galansky world, it's the rotation that sends me, if I'm here, through the string. The forearm turns and the finger plays when it gets to the wood. That is the playing mechanism. Now what happens when the finger has played is it triggers, in response, the sustaining mechanism, which for your left hand is vibrato. So the vibrato is not something I have to actively do. I can train it to be triggered by the moment of playing. So it's do, do. Now what tends to happen is we know vibrato is an expressive tool and we muddle up the playing and the sustaining. So we get a number of results. Often we get things that are out of tune because the finger's landing in one direction or the other. We might try and push off from the vibrato because we're still vibrating. 
Or we might have a really hard time starting the vibrato because actually the finger's stuck. But if I'm aware that it's play, vibrate, the vibrato is a triggered movement as a result of the playing. That way, I can make it faster, slower, I can do whatever I want with it, but it is a responsive movement. So we talk about a playing mechanism, which is the finger passing through the string, triggering a sustaining mechanism. And in the end, it doesn't mean I can't play legato. What it does mean is I have to stop before I play the next note. I can't continuously vibrate and get the playing mechanism going. So I play, triggers the vibrato, I stop, I play again, triggers the vibrato. So it doesn't mean still legato. But you can you can hear every note start. question about the quick and small vibrato. Okay. If you could show me that. Yes. Can you can you play a spot where you find it tricky? Like so any note. Can, or, yeah. Any note or any passage. Can be anything you like, just so I can see what you're doing at the moment. Okay. Okay, so what's I'm just um, gonna play your scale or something. Okay. So. And I'm gonna okay. ask you to turn that way just okay. and I'll probably walk around you. Okay. Alright. First thing, do it again. Yeah. I have a question. Is, does your upper arm feel far this way? Yeah, actually. It does. It does. Yeah. Okay. The, you know, there's, there are lots of good ingredients going on. Mm -hmm. The thumb is responsive. Okay. Um, the wrist isn't tight, but your upper arm looks far yeah. across. Now, if I pull my upper arm across, I'm going to jam things up under here. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's turn you around so they can see you from, from, from the back. So right now, his upper arm is about here. It's pulling in this way. And let's see if we can... The other thing it's doing is it's causing a problem in your wrist. Okay. Can you feel that? I'm going to move you. Yeah. And we're going to see if we can get this. Yeah, let's go through that falling up and let's just land on your first finger. There you go. Good. Let's do it again. Great. Good. And you're going it, to, it's a lot smaller than you think it is. Okay. That's it? Good. Let's do it again. So your arm is in a different position, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Your upper arm is in a... Great. And let's make sure this isn't... This wrist is with you. That okay. he's not bent inwards. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Try it again. Good. That's better. Much better. You're really on Can that you? finger. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. If it's fits quicker too. Yeah. Okay. Able to be quicker. All right. So explain the problem. Okay. I'm Emily and I have a problem with my vibrato as well, in that uh, I can tend to tense up and therefore my own wrist seems to force itself out outwards. outwards. Okay. All right, is it mostly in those higher positions or when you're around the body? Anywhere, Could actually. be anywhere. Sometimes even when I'm lower, because I'm aware that I'm lower down. Okay. I'm Can you play something for okay. two seconds where it, where it tends to happen? All right, 
great. Okay, so we talked earlier today that each part has to do its job, right? And when we looked at the fingers, I said that the fulcrums in the fingers are the little knuckles that we have. And the fulcrum is the wrist here, and then I've got my elbow, and then I've got my shoulder. Mm -hmm. We also said that if one of those little parts, doesn't matter how small, if one of those little parts is not doing its job, something else will do too much. Mm -hmm. And that's when we feel what you're feeling right now, which is when everything goes tight. So the part of your hand that's not working, first of all, is these, this row of knuckles, in particular this one here which is very, very normal mm -hmm. to see. What tends to happen, you know, one of the issues we deal with is that our hand is incredibly close to the instrument, and much of the time it's touching the instrument. Now I can touch the instrument without squishing and squeezing into it. I can be very close, I could stand right next to you without pressing on you, right? Or I could stand right next to you and I could press on you. So it's very important that this knuckle and this finger realize that they can be complete even when they're right next to the neck. Okay, so let's have a look. I'm gonna move your hand around, mm -hmm. okay? Let's move you that way a little bit. All right, so this knuckle, can you see inside your hand from where you are? I can. You can, all right. If I, let's get rid of your viola for a second. I'm gonna take it, I've got it. <laughs> and can you do what we did a second ago? If I make a table for you, can you land on your first finger on my arm? And let's have a look. Good, let's do it again. Good, I'm gonna get you a music stand to work on. Okay, yeah. All right, you can, you can get rid of your bow if you want. All right, and let's get this to a good height. Let's see, where's your arm? Let's get, can you just put your finger on there? All right, let's get this a little lower. Okay, can you stand on your first finger on there? Good, if you wanna move so you can see your hand better. Right, pretty good. So the first thing you notice is you have a knuckle. You see this? Yes. All right, so he has not collapsed on the music stand. Mm -hmm. But when you play the viola, yes. Oh. Ah, and when this goes down, what does this do? Compensate. Goes up. <laughs> so then you try and do that vibrato, which is supposed to be this lovely flowing movement. There you go, ah. there's your problem. Okay, so what we've got to do is to train your hand, which based on the fact that you can do it this way up, mm -hmm. shouldn't be hard to do, to have a knuckle, in particular on this finger. Okay, now if you picture what the hand looks like, just move, you're not quite square to yourself, there you go. If you picture what the hand looks like when it's in this shape from inside, we're looking at the hand from the inside, aren't we? We're not looking at it from the top you would see a, a really lovely curve inside the hand. Now, when the hand is collapsed, that sort of flattens out, okay? So what we're gonna look at and feel is we're gonna start to recognize that curve, mm -hmm. okay? So let's get your viola up. We were bringing this up. Okay, so if you stand on your first finger, right, we've got to picture, there you go. Mm -hmm. And then these, Yes. So the moment you have that, and your arm is playing in that direction, you'll realize that this is free to move. Yeah. You feel the difference? Yeah. yeah. And you, here's, here's the tricky thing is that this is so close to the neck, and that's often, it's this, a little bit the same problem with that finger on the bow, that because it's touching the neck or very close, it has a tendency to sort of pull in and think it needs to do something else. Great. 